they're going to have an iPhone OS 4. In addition, there's over 100 new user features. And again, here's just a few of them. Users can now create playlists on their phone. We've added a 5x digital zoom in the camera app. You know how you can tap to focus when you're taking a still picture? You can now tap to focus on video. Every iPhone, every, every photo taken on the iPhone is geotagged. And we've added places in the photo app now so you can see where they were taken. You can change the home screen wallpaper. It's been a huge request that we've gotten. Uh, you can use Bluetooth keyboards. And uh, we've added a spell checker, which is really nice. If you misspell a word, it'll underline it. You just tap it, and it'll give you the rec what it thinks might, uh, what you might have wanted to type. You can uh, gift apps. This has been a big request, too. So you can buy an app and gift it to somebody right from your phone. So again, these are just a few of the end user features, over 100 of them, in iPhone OS 4. Now, of those, we're going to talk about seven today. We call them tentpole features. Uh, we don't have time to talk about all 100, but we're going to talk about seven of them today. So let's get into it. Let's start off with the first one, which is uh, probably going to be the biggest one, and that is multitasking. <laughs> now, we weren't the first to this party, but we're going to be the best, just like cut and paste. Other people had cut and paste before we did, but everybody, it's, I think, widely believed that we just nailed it uh, with the way we did it, and it's much better than, than any other implementation. I think we'll, people will think the same about multitasking because it's really easy to implement multitasking in a way that really drains battery life. These apps start running in the background, and there goes your battery. And it's really easy to implement it in a way that reduces the performance of the foreground app and makes your phone feel really sluggish. So if you, if you don't do it just right, your phone's going to feel sluggish and your battery life's going to go way down. And people have experienced that a lot. We figured out how to implement multitasking for third-party apps and avoid those things. And that's what took us a little longer, but I think we nailed it. So what I'd like to do now is demo it for you so you can see what it looks like for the end user. We've got a great user interface for it, and um, I think you'll like it. So I've got a phone here with a cable to the projector, and uh, just slide to unlock. You can see I've got uh, my wallpaper up there. And uh, I'm going to just go ahead and, and launch mail right off the dock there. And uh, so here I am in mail. I'm going to look at a mail message. And uh, this mail message has a, uh, has a URL to a website. So I'm going to go to that website, and I just click on it. And I'm taken to the browser, right? So far, this is what we do every day on an iPhone. And here I am at this uh, Mount Kilimanjaro website. Now I want to go back to reading my mail. I'm done looking at this website. What do I do? I could navigate back to the home screen and then click on mail again. But rather than that, I can just double click the home button. And the window raises up, and it shows me all the apps that are running. These are all the apps that are running. And I want to go back to mail, and I go right back to where I left it. I want to go back to that web page. There I am, right back at the web page. Very simple. Very, very simple. So now what I want to do is I want to go to eBay uh, to check on an auction I'm following. I can just tap on it. And again, I go right to where I left off in the apps. So here I am on eBay where I left off. I'm checking my auction. And uh, now I want to go play a game. Let me go play Tap Tap Revenge. And Tap Tap Revenge gives me a countdown. It keeps me where I was, but it gives me a countdown of, uh... all right, I'm not winning here. So I... again, the game stops. And I can say, great, let me go back and look at mail here. Check mail out. I've been playing a game for a while. Oops, that was the website. Sorry. Let's go to mail. There's mail right there. OK, I don't have any new mail that I need to look at. So let me go back to my game. And again, it's going to take me right back where I left off. Three, two, one.
pretty cool, huh? And again, I can go home anytime I want just by clicking the home button again. And boom, I'm home. All right? Make sense? Really simple UI. Puts the icons of all the apps that are running right at the bottom where I can just flick them with my thumb right here. And it's very, very easy to use, very efficient. And we think users are going to love it. Also, you can see the new look of the dock right there. And again, custom wallpaper. So that is our multitasking UI. And it's really wonderful. We've been using it a lot, and it really changes the way you use the iPhone. You're bouncing around between apps just with, with tremendous fluidity. It's very, very nice. So to explain how we did this while preserving battery life and performance, I'm going to turn it over now to Scott Forrestall, our Senior Vice President of iPhone Software. Scott? Thank you. So we are really excited about adding multitasking to apps in the App Store. But how did we do it? Right? How are we adding multitasking while preserving battery life and performance? Well, we looked at the tens of thousands of apps in the App Store, and we distilled down the services that those apps need to multitask in the background. And then we implemented all those services ourselves and did so in a way that preserves battery life and performance. And now, in iPhone OS 4, we're providing those services as APIs to developers. So developers can add multitasking while the system preserves battery life and performance. We're providing seven multitasking services. And let me walk you through this now. The first one is background audio. Now, there are a number of popular audio streaming apps on the store, but none as popular as Pandora. With 50 million registered users, 13 million of whom stream their customized internet radio stations right to their iPhones, Pandora is changing the way that people think about radio. And Pandora has a great application that a lot of our customers use, but until now, if you left that application to go to another app, the music stopped. No longer. With iPhone OS 4, Pandora can continue to play music in the background while you switch between apps. And you can even use these iPod controls on the lock screen to control Pandora. To give you a demo of how Pandora is going to take advantage of multitasking on iPhone OS 4, I'd like to invite up Pandora's founder, Tim Westergren. Tim. Thanks, Scott. Thank you, Scott, and thanks to Steve and the entire iPhone team. It's a real treat for us to share the stage with you today. I'm joined by our Chief Technology Officer, Tom Conrad, who'll be driving. Um, it's no exaggeration to say that the iPhone has single-handedly changed the trajectory of Pandora. Uh, when we launched our app in the summer of 2008, we were on a pretty good run. We had over 10 million listeners, and, and we were growing at a good clip. But the day we launched on the iPhone, everything changed. Suddenly, I could take this little guy out of my pocket and I could peruse my personal radio stations. Or I could create a new one to suit my mood. I could plug it into my car dashboard. Or I could take it to the gym. Or, or I could even dock it at home to stream Pandora through my home stereo system. It was this completely transformative moment for us because we suddenly became truly anytime, anywhere radio. Our, our growth rate almost doubled overnight. And we now add over 30,000 new listeners a day just on the iPhone. So what's the one thing that, th that can make this that much better? Background listening. So when Scott asked us to come here today, we jumped at the chance. Uh, it took our developers just one day to make Pandora fully background aware. And we'd like to show it to you now. So uh, let's say I'm on the train. I'm listening to my personalized radio station. Until now, that's all I'd be able to do. Uh, but with new, uh, the, the iPhone OS 4, I can now head over to Safari catch up on my newspaper reading. I'm going to browse over to the New York Times website and peruse some of the latest headlines. Notice 